Clozapine is one of the most effective medications to treat schizophrenia, although it's one of the least commonly prescribed in the United States. So why is that? So clozapine is a second generation antipsychotic that probably plays a role in blocking dopamine and serotonin receptors in the brain and really helps against the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, whether it's hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thought. It can also even help the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, such as the lack in social interactions or the feeling withdrawn. What's also unique about clozapine is that it doesn't have as much of the extra pyramidal side effects as some of the other antipsychotics. For example, not likely to cause tardive dyskinesia, which is sort of this these unusual or bizarre motor movements that some of the antipsychotics can cause. In fact, clozapine is thought to help decrease tardive dyskinesia effects. So why isn't it prescribed often in the United States? Well, interestingly, it's the most commonly prescribed or one of the most commonly prescribed antipsychotics in Australia. But in the United States, it's not as common, particularly due to the frequent blood monitoring that requires and the potential of the side effects. So clozapine, in order for someone to start taking it, they need to get their blood checked every week for the first six months that they're on the medication. So they need weekly blood draws basically to see how their neutrophils are in the body. The neutrophils are basically this helps to fight off infections, but clozapine has shown to decrease the amount of neutrophils in the body. And so you're just doing the weekly blood cell blood monitoring to make sure that the neutrophils is a normal amount. So after six months of normalcy on with the neutrophil count, then you can check the blood for every two weeks over the next six months. And again, if that is all within normal limits, and it usually is, then after that, the blood needs to be monitored once every month. So it's kind of can be a pain. You need to check uh, once a month the blood. Also, just like other antipsychotics, you have to routinely check cholesterol, uh, the blood sugars, make sure it doesn't really affect weight or increase chance of diabetes, which it can. So those things need to be monitored as well. Clozapine is a little bit unique in that it can cause a bunch of other side effects. It can increase chances of seizures a bit, can lead to problems with the heart, like inflammation of like the heart tissue. It can cause severe uh, drooling or salivating, it can be sort of unpleasant in social interactions, or it can lead to someone uh, choking on their saliva or getting more likely getting an aspiration pneumonia. So again, clozapine can be very effective for schizophrenia and psychosis, but it has these blood monitoring and these side effects, which is one of the reasons why it's not prescribed much in the United States. Also, this neutrophil count needs to be monitored and oftentimes it needs to be recorded in this clozapine REMS uh, website. And that can just be a little bit more administrative burden on the providers, which limits this medication being prescribed as well. One of the concerns about clozapine also is you need a really compliant patient in order to take this medication, not only to get the blood draws, whether it's every week, every two weeks or every month, but also to take the medication regularly. Unfortunately, a lot of people with schizophrenia do not like to take medications or won't take medications daily. If someone is on clozapine and they're without it for three days, they typically need to restart at the starting dose and gradually work themselves up. Otherwise, if you restart at the large dose of the clozapine, it can make it more likely that the side effects occur, whether it's the a granulocytosis or the destruction of the neutrophils, whether it's uh, the heart problems, whether it's the seizures. Typically, clozapine dose increases by 25 milligrams every day for the first two weeks. And then after that, you could probably increase it more aggressively, whether it's 50 milligrams a day or 100 milligrams a day.